Hello everyone. Welcome to ASAP's vlog series. My name is Marie Herman. I lead study groups to prepare students for the Certified Administrative Professional, Google G Suite, and Microsoft Office Specialist certifications. I also teach technology and career development programs to office professionals. I'm excited to be here to share some tips with you on sharing data across Microsoft Office programs. As I'm sure you have discovered, Microsoft programs don't always play nicely in the sandbox with each other. I'm going to show you several different ways you can share information across programs, some of which I'm sure you're already familiar with, but some of which you may never have noticed or played with before. So let's get started. I'll start in Excel just by copying some data. So I have selected here my sales rep through a couple of amount of order fields. I'm not doing anything special yet. Uh, notice there is, of course, the classic cut, copy, paste. I'm going to assume you're already familiar with that, but you might not have noticed that there's a drop down next to the copy. And there we have the option of doing a straight copy or a copy as a picture, in which case we can then paste it as a picture in a different program or within Excel. I'm going to show you later what the results are of that, uh, but I just wanted to point that out before we go over to Word. So I'm going to choose copy here. This is just a straight copy, nothing special about it, exactly the same as if I had pressed control C. When I go into Word and I have my blank document here where I want to paste this information, I go to the drop down under paste. You're probably already familiar with the first option, which is to keep the source formatting when you paste. That means it's going to keep the formatting from the document in Excel. My second button gives me the choice to use Word's destination styles. So whatever is currently being used in this Word document, it would incorporate that style into the pasted text. The third and fourth options give us a paste link choice. The first one is a paste link that keeps the source formatting. The second one is a paste link that uses the destination styles. If you don't see this, it may be because you have an older version of uh, Word. This is Office 365 that I'm demonstrating in. So when I put in the link and use destination styles and I click on that button, it pastes my information into this document. I'm going to go ahead and just change the layout to landscape so that things will fit a little better. And I'm going to select my text, move my cursor over the line that separates the two columns and double click to make it all fit on one screen. So you'll notice all of these fields are showing field codes. They're, sh they're shaded with gray behind them. And that is an indication that this is actually a field code and not just text that I typed in or in this case pasted in. What will happen is when I switch over to my Excel document and I make changes on my original, and let's say Steve Smart is actually Steve, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say Simpleton, Steve Simpleton. When I switch back over to my Word document, notice it didn't immediately update. In order for me to update this, I need to right mouse click and choose update link. If I had a lot of links within my document that I wanted to update at once, I would press control A first to select all of it and then right mouse click and update link and it would update all my links in my document at one time. So that's one option for how I can have the, the information linked within Excel, have it show within Word, and be able to make changes to it. Notice that's a one-way change. I can't make changes in my Word document and have it update in my Excel document. If I write over the text here, it will wipe out the link to Excel. If I go back to my home ribbon, and I'm going to have to repaste or recopy, excuse me, my file because once you start doing things, Excel wipes out the clipboard there. So I'm just going to do a uh, control C again to copy this. Come back over here to Word. I click the drop down for paste. The next button has the paste as a picture. So you'll remember if I wanted to, I could have just chosen copy as a picture inside of Excel when I was first copying the data. And it would have the same effect as if I copied without picture and came over to Word and chose paste picture. So when I put in a picture, notice it all fits nicely on the page here and I can resize this 
I can make it larger, smaller, whatever fits my purposes. And I don't have to worry about having it not fit on the page or cut off the edges or do anything else that you sometimes run into problems with when you're copying and pasting between the programs. Now, one thing I would have done if this was for real is I would have eliminated those filters in Excel because you can see the drop down arrows. That's the kind of thing you can kind of watch for when you're copying and pasting, especially with pictures, because it will bring over everything in the picture. Something else it will bring over is grid lines. And so you'll notice I don't have grid lines here in this file, and that's because I turned them off in my view first. So if you click on the view ribbon inside of Excel, you can turn grid lines on and off from there. If you have your grid lines turned on when you are copying and pasting, it will bring those grid lines along with you wherever you go to paste the pictures. So if you don't wanna have grid line show, make sure you turn them off inside of Excel first before you make your copy. Let's go down and look at the next options here. Our final button gives keep text only. And when I'm doing this, it's gonna insert the text as tabbed columns. It will not have the formatting that we would have had with our table. Now I'm just gonna select these. You'll notice these are kind of odd up here. It's not really any big deal. All it is is it brought over the hard returns as well. And so I could fix these. I could just you know press delete and get rid of those. Um, but I'm gonna actually delete that whole row of data and just have my resulting rows here. So once I have my plain text with my tabbed columns, then I can space those out by using my ruler inside of Word to insert new tabs. All I have to do is click where I want to place those. And so let's say I'm going to do something like this. A little quick tip for you that you may or may not already be familiar with. And actually, I'm just go ahead and put these down on the next page. If you wanted to get rid of something in the middle of tabbed columns, like let's say I don't need this regional office. If I just click and drag, well, that's not going to work well because it wraps and it takes the whole row with it. But if I hold down my Alt key while I click and drag, then I can actually select an entire column of the tabbed columns. And so now I can just press delete to get rid of that entire column and not have it show in my data anymore. So that's just a little bonus tip for you. Hold down your Alt key while you're clicking and dragging your mouse and it will select a rectangle instead of selecting by rows. So what else can we do with our copying and pasting here? Let's click the drop down and go to Paste Special. On the Paste Special menu, you'll see there's a Paste option and there's a Paste Link option. So almost all the choices are the same across these two. You'll see the Excel worksheet object formatted, unformatted. Over here, worksheet object formatted, unformatted. And then you have Bitmap, a picture enhanced meta file, HTML format and unformatted Unicode, picture format Windows Meta file, bitmap, Word hyperlink. That's what's unique with the paste link menu. And then the HTML format and the unformatted Unicode text. So with paste, I could choose to paste my data as an Excel worksheet object. I just select it, choose OK. What that does is that inserts the information into my document and it looks just like a regular table, but it's not. The difference here is I can double click on that table. It will open up a new worksheet in document one. So this is separate from my original data. This is a worksheet in document one, and it lets me go in and make changes here. And then I can save it and go back to my Word document. And so here is Steve Smart. Notice as soon as I made the change, it was updated automatically. When you are working with an Excel object inside of Word, it brings over the full functionality of Excel into Word, including all the mathematical functions, all of the data tools that are available to you in Excel. Only when you look at it from Word, it looks like it's just a regular Word table. So that's a great way to get data from Excel into Word and have it actually update automatically. Now you noticed that did have it put in as a document, a worksheet in a document, rather than as my original. 
here's my original data. It still says Steve Simpleton. It did not update when I changed it to smart because it's not connected that way. So this is independent of my original data. Next, I'm going to have to copy it one more time because, again, I was doing something with the data. Go back to my Word document here. All I did was copy there. I didn't do anything special. And in my Word document, there we go. I can do paste, paste special. So formatted text is essentially the same as if I had inserted it with the original source formatting from Excel. Unformatted text brings it over the equivalent of plain text with no formatting at all. Bitmap and picture file, the enhanced meta file, these are graphic formats and there's really not much difference between them in, in Word. So if I do a paste here, here's my bitmap and the bitmap will allow you to put in actual photos. I mean, you could do this with photographs. The Windows Enhanced Meta File will let you do 32-bit graphics. Um, it's smaller in file, so it's leaner. Bitmaps are bigger in file file size. They're actually bigger. Um, but the Enhanced Meta File was created specifically for Windows. If I say OK here, you can see these two look about the same. There's no difference. But the difference is if you go into PowerPoint and you do the same thing. I go in, I do paste paste special. I'm going to insert one as an enhanced meta file, and then I'm going to insert one as a bitmap. Paste, paste special, scroll down, bitmap, and you'll notice there's a device independent bitmap too. That just means it'll work in any program. So a lot of people will use those for web pages. Notice the difference here. This is where it can make a difference. Um, so one comes in with a transparent background. The other one comes in with a white background. And so that could be something that's useful for you to know for one versus the other. Not that you can't go in and modify the background on the bitmap, but that's going to take more work. It's extra steps for you. So if you want a clear, transparent background, paste it as a Windows Enhanced Meta file. And so I just wanted to make you aware of some of these different options that are available to you within Office. There's actually even more that you can do for sharing data across programs, lots more. But these are just a couple of things where you work with copy and paste every day, but have you ever actually learned some of the nuances of how things are different across Microsoft Office? So thank you all for joining me for this presentation for ASAP's vlog series. Uh, my name again is Marie Herman. I own MRH Enterprises LLC, and I'm so happy that you were able to join me today.